Okay, so as I said, the last step we have to do um, before we align this is truncate everything so that they all line up at the end without anybody having anything extra on the right. If you do, it just makes the analysis take very, very long, perhaps hours. So uh, we're gonna speed the process up. So um, where you see the killer whale is missing a whole chunk of stuff here that everybody else has, that's a good place to truncate it. So we're gonna go one base before that, so where everybody has a base. And if you click on the gray box at the top, it selects that entire column. And so now we need to select everything to the right of it all the way to the end. That's really easy if you're using Windows because you just hold down the Shift key and hit the End button, which is on your, on your keyboard, and that selects everything to the end, and then you'll hit Delete. In a Mac, it's not so easy. We don't have an End key, just like we didn't have a Home key. So what you have to do if you're using a Mac is hold down the Shift key and hit the right arrow to, and start selecting all of it by hand. So in a Mac, it takes a long time. In Windows, if you just use the N key, it's like instantaneous. This is, yeah, like I said, this program is not that friendly to Macs. I could probably speed up the process if I keep holding down the Shift key. I think I can scroll all the way over, yep, and go like that, and that selects everything. Okay, and then uh, I just go up and hit the cut. And so now you can see everything's truncated, so you don't have somebody with a big missing part. Okay, so now we are ready to align this thing. So what we're gonna do is go up to here. You can either click there or you can go up to here where it says alignment. And we went to align by Clustal W. So what Clustal W is, is it's a statistical um, analysis where it basically does pairwise comparisons between every two species, trying to figure out where their bases match up statistically. And then also does a multiple comparison where after it's done the pairwise, it compares across all the species. So I'm going to click that. Now it says nothing selected for alignment, select all. You say okay. Uh, then it gives you some values here. We're just gonna accept the default. Again, if you're interested in learning more about this, you can read about it and learn how to manipulate these figures. So I'm gonna hit okay. And now it can take a while. Um, the more species you have, the longer the analysis is gonna take. Um, but you wanna make sure you have enough species to get a good tree. So this could take a while. And, and depending on the speed of your computer, it could take quite a while. And depending on how dissimilar the species are, it could take a while. So that's why I say you don't wanna go below 80% identity on any of the species because it'll just make this process take forever. So, um, I went down to 84% was as low as I went. But you can see it's plugging along. It's gonna do the pairwise alignment first. After that's done, the multiple alignment goes much faster. So just let it go, you know, go grab a sandwich. I'm gonna pause this and I will be back when my alignment um, is done. Okay, I'm back and it looks like my alignment is almost done. It's almost done with the multiple alignment. So probably just a couple more seconds and it will be done and we can do our tree, yay. Okay, there we go. So if I click anywhere in here, it'll go back to the colors. And remember, we're all the way at the end, so I'm gonna scroll back. I'm gonna move my head out of the way here. Scroll back this way. And scroll back this way. And look at, look at that. I mean, look how much similarity there is. And the closer you get to the beginning, the more similar it is. And now you're probably saying, well, what are, what are like these, for example, gaps that you see here? So what that means is that over evolutionary time, so in the lineage to the horse, either um, this whole section of DNA was deleted um, from their genome, or um, maybe it was inserted into everybody else's, but that's less likely. So probably in the horse lineage, it was just deleted. Um, over here, you see, you know, a couple base mutations in the killer whale. So the killer whale had a guanine, where everybody else except the horse had a thymine, and here it had an adenine, whereas everybody else had a guanine. So these little changes that build up can account for different proteins and therefore different traits, and you get evolution of different species. So anyway, it's fascinating and things get more dissimilar as you get towards towards the end. But you can see, like, look at that. The, the gorilla has a whole chunk of genetic material that the rest of these guys didn't have. 
Um, so anyway, it's really, really fascinating to study this stuff. Now, if you wanted to take a picture of this just for, you know, your records, um, if you're using a Windows, you could do Shift Print Screen. Okay, so now that we've done our alignment, we are ready for the moment we've all been waiting for, creating our phylogenetic tree. That's the goal of this whole thing, is to create an evolutionary tree so we can track the evolution of this BRCA2 gene. So first thing we need to do is save our alignment session. So we're just going to go up to Data in the Alignment Explorer, Save Session, and then give it a name you recognize, like your name and then BRCA2, and save it to somewhere where you're going to be able to find it. Click Save. And now what you're actually going to do is close out this Alignment Explorer. Now, I know that sounds scary, but go ahead and close it. Okay, so now that you have closed out your alignment and saved it somewhere on your computer, uh, we're going to go ahead and call it back up. So once you're back to our home menu where we, we started, this window here, uh, go to Align and go to Edit Build Alignment and open a saved alignment session. So uh, when you open a saved alignment session, you hit OK and find the one that says MAS on the bottom. And open that. Okay, so we're going to open that right there. And it calls it back up. Um, and now uh, we are going to do a phylogenetic analysis. So uh, click on data, scroll down, phylogenetic analysis. And it's going to say protein coding nucleotide sequence data. Yes. So we're going to hit yes right there and it's going to do its analysis. So now you might be saying, where did it go? What happened? It's behind your windows. So get rid of that. Click on this one right here and uh, where it says um, phylogeny neighbor joining. Uh, we want to, where it says phylogeny, we want to go to construct neighbor joining tree. Neighbor joining is a kind of statistical test. Click on it. It says, would you like to use the currently active data? And we say, Yes, and in fact, if you want to do this again in the future, you can always click that, so hit yes. And it's going to bring up this window right here. Again, we can accept the default settings. Um, the better you get at this, the more cool stuff you can do. And here's the moment of truth we're going to hit, compute. And it's computing. And when it's done, ta-da, we have now spit out a phylogenetic tree of the BRCA2 gene. How cool is that? And you're like, okay, what does this mean? Well, we have down here um, time. This is um, uh, millions of years. The common ancestor that would give rise to all these animals we looked up for this gene would be back here. And notice that there's basically two lineages that developed. We had the lineage of these guys who are all primates, um, and the lineage down here that led to these out, out groups, the horse and the uh, killer whale. So just looking up here, we're almost identical for this gene sequence to a gorilla, as well as to both the chimpanzee and the bonobo. So these guys are indistinguishable from each other, and they're so close to the gorilla and the human. And all these guys, because you can see these little lines are so short, that means they're so close. Um, they diverged so recently in evolutionary time. But they shared a common ancestor with this uh, orangutan here. So the common ancestor of all of these primates was here. And the common ancestor that gave rise to this lineage of chimps, humans, and gorillas and orangutans um, also gave rise to the lineage of monkeys leading to this little calithrix marmoset here. So that's how you interpret that lineage. And this is all just for one gene, the, the breast cancer gene. But the fact that we had an ancestor way back here that would have given rise to the breast cancer gene is pretty amazing. I mean, a horse has it and a, and a killer whale has it. So these guys are fairly diverged from each other. You can see how long that arm is. But, um, but not that long since um, they diverged from the common ancestor that led to our lineage of um, of the BRCA2 gene, the primate lineage. And uh, if you're really interested, you can read more about this down here, but this is pretty cool. Okay, so um, in the next and last tutorial, I will show you how to create a pretty PowerPoint presentation of your, of your tree here with pictures of your animals, as well as how to look up genes of your own interest, um, for example, diabetes, 
or uh, Tay-Sachs or any uh, genetic disorder or anything that uh, they've done ge genetic work on that you might be interested in doing an evolutionary tree on.